Hi, I'm Pat Summerall, and you may recognize me from my NFL broadcast on television. I've been covering professional sports for a lot of years now, and I'm still active today, thanks to the revolutionary world of vision correction. You know, in my job, I had to be able to see the players on the field. I also had stats in front of me at all times, so every angle of vision was important to me. Now, with the crystal lens procedure, I see just as well as I did when I was younger. I'd like to share that with you today and encourage you to ask questions and explore the possibilities of sight with the crystal lens. You'll be happy you did. So let's now take a look at this new technology and see how it works. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Mandel, and thank you for choosing our practice for your cataract evaluation. We offer this educational videotape as a means to teach you about how the eye works, what cataracts are, and what lens choices we have to place inside the eye at the time of surgery. Please review the tape a number of times, review it with friends and family, mark down any questions that you have, and let's talk about it at the time of your evaluation. Whether we're seeing the smiling face of a loved one or a favorite television show, our eyes are our windows to the world. Whether near or far, the young eye can focus on just about any object. But what happens inside the eye to make this possible? As early as the 1930s, Fincham theorized that the eye's natural lens flexes and arches. The purpose of this video is to illustrate this accommodative flexing and arching, which take place in both the natural crystalline lens and in today's accommodative intraocular lenses. As the focus changes from distant to near objects, the ciliary muscles contract, the ciliary fibers slacken, and the crystalline lens becomes more rounded for near vision. This process is known as accommodation. As we get older, however, our eyes lose the ability to accommodate. We may develop cataracts, which cloud the natural lens and can prevent a clear image from forming on the retina. Let's spend a moment and talk about how the eye works. The light enters the eye through the cornea, which is essentially a clear window. It is then passes through the pupil and through the lens of the eye. It's the lens of the eye that focuses the light onto the back of the eye. The back of the eye is lined with a thin film called the retina. It is the lens of the eye that becomes cloudy with time, and that's called a cataract. At the time of cataract surgery, we make a very small incision in the white part of the eye, right where it meets the cornea. The incision is about a tenth of an inch long. We remove the lens of the eye, that is, the cataract, and we replace it with a lens implant. So let's talk about the various lens implant choices. Traditionally, we place a lens in one eye for the distance and then the other eye for the distance. That allows you good distance vision in both eyes, although you may need to wear some glasses some of the time. But it doesn't allow you good vision for intermediate objects such as dashboard and computer or cell phone, and it doesn't allow you good reading vision, so you definitely need glasses for those distances. The other option is to place a lens implant in one eye for the full distance and the other eye for reading. That allows you pretty good distance vision and pretty good reading vision, but again, it's not good at the intermediate distances for cell phone or computer or dashboard. The latest technology involves using the crystal lens. The crystal lens is a flexible lens that allows us to focus at multiple distances so that we place a crystal lens in each eye, which gives us good distance vision, good intermediate vision, and quite good reading vision as well. Patients may choose to replace the natural lens with an accommodating intraocular lens. Like the natural lens, the crystal lens creates accommodation from distance to near vision by moving along the visual axis. Both the original crystalline lens and the crystal lens also arch or change their radius of curvature to increase their accommodation. They both move anteriorly and flex or arch to increase their focusing power in the intermediate and near ranges. We can now bridge the generation gap with accommodating lenses. They allow us to restore the near and intermediate vision of our middle adulthood. 
Now that we've heard more about the crystal lens, let's talk about what we can realistically expect. Although these lenses are the very best technology that we have today, they're not absolutely perfect in that they don't allow you to see a fly on the wall at 100 yards and then read the back of a lottery ticket. So some people may need sunglasses for some things some of the time. However, it's technology that allows us the very best flexibility that gives us distance, intermediate, and some reading vision. So some of the time you need to expect to wear sunglasses for certain tasks. Now if you have a fair bit of pre-existing astigmatism, that is where the eye is shaped a little bit more like a football than a basketball, we may need to make some little incisions at the time of surgery or after surgery called astigmatic incisions in order to make the football shape of the eye more like a basketball and that helps the crystal lens work better. Or if we're off in the lens calculation or the lens does not focus exactly where we want to, if you don't want to wear glasses then we may need to do a little LASIK fine tuning. If you've had prior refractive surgery, that is LASIK or PRK or RK in the past, and now you're electing to have the crystal lens, the lens implant calculations will be a little bit off and glasses or LASIK surgery will be required to fine tune your vision in order to achieve your best possible vision. My name is Burton Kasdan and I'm an optometrist and I've been an optometrist in the Bay Area since 1964. I've seen many ophthalmologists. Uh, I've watched them do surgery. I've watched Dr. Mandel do surgery more than anyone else. And I, in my opinion, I always thought that he was the best, the most meticulous, the most careful. I have sent many, many patients to him. And when I've uh, sent those patients to him, and if, when they asked me, is he the best, I said, well, when it's my turn, I'm going to go to him, and that's exactly what I did. A few years ago, oh, a short time ago, my eyes started to deteriorate because I was getting, I'm in my 70s, so I'm not surprised that I started getting uh, cataracts. I went and saw Dr. Mandel, and yes, he agreed that I had cataracts, and then he started talking to me about the, all the options of what we can do for the, uh, the implant. Now the implant that I was most familiar with was the one that one eye is fitted for distance and the other eye is fitted for close so I can be able to read and, and see up close. Uh, he told me that there is another option and that's the crystal lens which allows uh, my both my eyes to be able to focus up uh, like a normal eye, not fully but mostly. And I've noticed since the surgery, which was uh, earlier this year, that I am able to see clearly to drive and then look at my dashboard, look at my uh, GPS, which is very important to me, and I focus right on it and it's crystal clear. So I really enjoyed the, the ability to have some focusing uh, like I had before I had my cataracts. Uh, I have patients who are obviously have cataracts because it just happens in, in a normal co course of events. And I tell them to, uh, it's time to have the surgery. And I recommend Dr. Mandel. And then I tell them the options that are available and one option is one eye distance, one eye close, both eyes distance and wear reading glasses and the third option is the crystal lens which allows you to focus part of the time, a part of the way but enough to do everything that you need to do at, at arm's length and I have it myself and I'm very happy with it and I show them a card that shows the lens that uh, moves and I recommend it and they go on from there. It's up to them. I trust that you found this video presentation to be helpful and informative. I have been confidently implanting the crystal lens since shortly after its FDA approval in 2003 and my crystal lens patients represent many of the happiest patients in my practice. 
As a cataract specialist, I'm dedicated to helping you achieve your best possible visual outcome, and I recommend the crystal lens to all qualified patients, even though there's an additional out-of-pocket cost involved. Should you require further information to help you better understand the options available to you, please feel free to ask me at your evaluation or any of our staff here at Optima, and thank you for your attention.